Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to walk you through retrograde transition and carousel transition, both found in Red Giant Universe 2.2. Now, both of these transitions take much of their look from existing effects that have been in Red Giant Universe for a few versions now. Carousel is a photo treatment filter that simulates a sort of cross-processing look on your image. It also introduces some vignetting and there's also some frame options in here to add an additional frame around the edge. Retrograde is more of an old film treatment style. It mimics the look of 8mm or 16mm film. The color treatments, noise prints, and additional elements like the hair, dust, and splotches are captured from actual 8mm and 16mm film stocks. So in Universe 2.2, we wanted to design a couple of transitions that work very similarly to both carousel and retrograde. So I'd like to start with the carousel transition. So I'll go to my video transitions, RG universe transitions, and locate carousel transition right here. I'll drop this on my cut point between two clips. Now as I slowly play through this, you'll see that it not only moves into the same color treatment that carousel uses, but it also introduces a slide frame around the edges of the video. If I select this and go to my effect controls, We'll see that we can control the direction of the transition and can go up or down. The animation menu pulls up a preset list of commonly used speed curves. These curves can either ease out and ease in or both ease out and in of the transition. The default eases in and out and it uses what's called a quintic speed curve, which is very slow to ease and very fast in the middle. So if you'd like something that has a little more evenly distributed speed, we could use something like ease in out cubic. And this will smooth out the speed curve a little bit. I'll make the duration of the transition a little bit longer to make this more obvious. So this is ease in out cubic. And here is ease in out quintic. So you can see in this case, the middle of the animation moves a lot faster. The dolly slider essentially controls how far away the slide and image will move away from our perspective during the transition. So a low value will keep it relatively close to the camera and a higher dolly will move it further away. The max blur slider controls an overall blur effect that's applied to the slide and image, mimicking a sort of out of focus effect as it moves away from the camera. The frame style controls the style of the photo slide that is around the image. We have five different presets that are loaded in here that pull up a number of different styles that you can use. Now both the carousel effect and the retrograde effect both have the ability to work with a square frame, which is more in line with the frame style that you'd find in this style of photo projector. So if you're using that option, inside the transition there's also an option to use a square frame. Now this would assume that your composition is actually using a square frame as well. You'll notice in a 16 by 9 composition, you'll see the edges of the slide pop on at the beginning of the slide. So if you're going to be using square settings for both of these, it's best to keep your sequence or composition at a square aspect ratio. Keep in mind, Carousel and Retrograde also have the ability to use a 16 by 9 or simply no frame at all. Now also, if you are using carousel as an effect, you might want to disable the color treatment by clicking on enable color. This will remove the carousel effect, but keep the animation in place. Also, as found in the carousel effect, there is a light leak effect using a number of photographic light leaks that are introduced with the image. Now I've largely skipped over the color section of the carousel transition. This is largely identical to the carousel effect. There is a vignette that is essentially a projector frame vignette that's mixed with the image. We have an overall color process that you can sort of ease in or out how much of this cross-processing treatment is on the image. And we have individual controls to control how each channel is given that cross-processing treatment. So we can give it sort of a blue tint by turning up the blue channel or kind of an aqua tint by turning up green and blue just a little bit. We can fade the image overall with the fading control, and there's a contrast control. They're all relatively simple and easy to use. Now let's move on to the retrograde transition. So I'll delete the carousel transition, go to my effects under RJ Universe Transitions, and I'll grab the retrograde transition. This is very similar in idea to the carousel transition. 
Whereas retrograde mimics the look of 8mm and 16mm film, the transition uses 8mm and 16mm film scans to frame the video during the transition. One thing you'll find with the retrograde transition is that there's quite a bit more movement in the transition itself. The retrograde transition lets you move multiple frames. How far it moves, or how many frames it travels, is this slide distance right here. So if I set this to four, this will travel four full frame heights in distance from one clip to the other. Just like Carousel, we have a dolly control that controls how far it moves from the camera. We have the same color treatment option that we can use to enable or disable the color. And in the color treatment section, we have a set of color controls that are very similar to the retrograde effect, such as the film fading, the overall color process, which is applying to film treatment, color saturation, exposure, blur, flicker, etc. These are all pretty straightforward. We can control the surrounding image frame by selecting the frame style here, such as an 8mm slide or one that includes the soundtrack on the side. There is a vignette control that controls how much of the photographic vignette is applied to the image. The crop to frame size checkbox applies to when you are using something like a square treatment and you want to crop the video inside the square frame. Now towards the bottom here, we'll see a set of light leaks. These are actually taken from the half-light transition, also found in Red Giant Universe. So we have mixed in most of the half-light light leak presets in with the retrograde transition. In fact, if you go to the browse presets, you can roll over each of the light leak presets and select these and just modify the light leaks. Now, one big difference between the retrograde transition and the retrograde effect is that all of the film grain splotches and hair and all that have been distilled down to one slider here, which is the film grain. We found it a bit of overkill to have all these different sliders for dust, hair, splotches, film grain, etc., for a transition effect. So we've distilled it down to a simple slider. The motion blur slider is going to control how much motion blur is rendered based on how much movement is in the effect. Lastly, at the very bottom, we have a background color, so you can modify the background color if you so desire. You can also control its overall transparency if you'd like to customize the background with a different photographic treatment. Now, I'd like to point out that many of the transitions in Red Giant Universe have the preset browser built right in. In the case of retrograde and carousel transition, there's not a huge amount of variety that you can achieve with these transitional effects. So you'll find the basic settings pre-configured for you in these presets. Now, as I mentioned with the retrograde transition, you can browse the different light leak types that are built into the plugin, but you also see the presets for the different 16 millimeter and eight millimeter slide types up here, as well as the blank projection frame. So that is retrograde transition, as well as carousel transition, both found in Red Giant Universe 2.2. My name's Harry Frank. We'll see you next time. Many thanks to our friends at Pond5 for much of the footage we use in this tutorial. To see more of their footage, go to Pond5.com.